Hello everybody, uh, welcome to ISSC 422. This is Professor Labarge and today we're going to be covering lab number 10, Implementing an Information System Security Policy. You'll notice the blue screen in the front. We need to wait for all the target windows to show up. So I'm just going to start with an introduction about uh, what we're actually going to be doing. Every company operates within a complex combination of laws, regulations, requirements, and competitors, as well as partners. In addition, morale, labor relations, productivity, cost, and cash flow affect how a company operates. Some organizations adhere to one or more well-known security frameworks, such as your ISO, your NIST, the NIST, or the COBIT, the COBIT. Others choose a framework simply based on their legal requirements, such as PCI, for those working or handling uh, credit card information. Within this environment, management must develop and publish an overall security policy for the organization. This policy drives the creation of standards, and standards drive the creation of specific procedures designed to comply with the policy. Controls ensure that all security procedures are followed, and security standards are upheld throughout the organization. Changes in laws, regulations, and organizational priorities mean that security policies tend to change over time, and organizations simply grow into compliance organically. Each element of the security framework has a specific requirement for security professionals. They are involved with the compliance monitoring, security awareness, training, access control, privacy, incident response, log analysis, and the list goes on. Even with little time or financial resources allocated to the effort, it is still possible to do this successfully with the many compliance tools that are readily available with both Windows and Linux systems. In this lab, uh, we are going to act simply as a member of the network security team. We're going to be given an assignment to implement security standards which have been adopted by our organization. One of them being a, uh, adopting a, a password policy um, for the organization, which we're going to change using uh, the Group Policy Management Console. Um, so it looks like uh, the blue screen went away, so everything's loaded. Remember, you cannot start this lab without uh, having all those uh, boxes checked, uh, showing that the virtual machines are up and running. So as I mentioned, uh, what we're going to first do is we're going to configure a domain-level policy. Uh, I can't stress it enough, but setting a strong password policy is one of the first steps in implementing a comprehensive security program. Weak passwords allow unauthorized access to your network, and by extension, the sensitive documents, proprietary code, and accounting files stored on it. A strong policy itself is not enough. Continuous monitoring for login success as well as failure is a good way to detect mischief on the network. We want to see who's looking, who's trying to get in, and how many times have, been they, have they been trying to get in. An overabundance of failures from a particular user account can simply indicate a Bruce force attack. We want to, to identify that quick. Equally suspicious are successful accesses uh, at, at odd times or while a given resource is on vacation. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, set up that group policy. What I'd like everybody to do is uh, go ahead and click on the RDP folder, and we're going to click on the target window one. We're going to open that up. We're going to give it a second to load up. All right. This uh, FileZilla server, we can close out of that. We don't need that. I got a little bit of lag. Next thing that we're going to come, we're going to do is we're going to go down to the server uh, manager uh, icon, and we're going to load that up. We're going to give that a second to load. All right, once that's loaded, we're gonna move up here to tools and we're gonna click the local security policy right here. And I apologize, I got a little bit of lag on my uh, system at the moment. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring that down here a little bit and I'm gonna make the window bigger.
All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna drop down to the account policies. So right over here. We're gonna go down to the password policy. And we see the policy over to the right. And you can notice that some things are set to zero. So enforced password history is zero, maximum password age is zero, minimum password age is zero, the minimum password length is eight characters. We're gonna change all this. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on the enforced password history. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that number to five. Once we have that in, we're gonna hit okay. And we can see how that uh, got changed. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the maximum password age. And we're going to change that to 30. We're going to click OK. Now we're going to click on the minimum password age. We're going to change that to 10. and the minimum password length is grayed out. Uh, you should notice that uh, this is disabled simply because a uh, password policy with a higher precedent has taken priority. In other words, uh, the domain or organization unit policy is forcing the value of this option. We're gonna actually change that here shortly. Actually, go back up to the minimum password age. Yeah, we can keep it at 10. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. All right. So what we just did is we changed the uh, local security policy. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to get out of here. We're going to go back over to Tools. We're going to go to Group Policy Management. There it is. Again, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So we can see the securelabsondemand.com. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to click down on domains, down to securelabsondemand.com. Uh, we're going to click on the default uh, domain policy. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on that and we're going to click Enforced. So we're going to enforce that. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and we're going to click Edit. So when we clicked Enforced, uh, the new password policy requires that the domain policies take precedence over organizational unit policies. Enforcing the default domain policy option here ensures that the domain level policies are not blocked or overridden by organizational unit policies given through the organization unit policies that have higher precedent. So we're doing that, uh, we're overriding some things. We're going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, the lag is killing me. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to uh, policies. We're going to come over here to uh, Windows settings. We're going to 
right click on security settings, account policies, there we go, and the password policy. So we're going to double click. Oops. All right. So we're going to uh, double click on enforce password history. We're going to define this policy setting. And we're going to change this to five. What we're ensuring here is that users may not reuse any of the last five passwords that they had. I'm sure we've all come across that at some point in our life. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on maximum password age. What we're gonna do is define policy and we're gonna keep that at 42. So when we click OK, uh, the existing domain policy indicates that the password will expire in 42 days. Uh, the new requirement is that passwords will expire in 30 days. Uh, in the password will expire uh, the, in the password uh, will expire in box. Uh, type 30 and click OK. So what we're going to do is uh, minimum age. Let's see. We're going to change this to 30. We click OK. All right, so a pop-up uh, window, which we just saw generated by the group policy manager, will open suggesting that the minimum password age policy should be changed to 29 to align the two policies. We're gonna click OK like I did to dismiss that. We're gonna click the uh, minimum password age. Oops, not the length, uh, the lag. All right, minimum password length. Um, even though the group policy manager changed the minimum password age to 29 in the previous step, uh, the new policy that uh, we are gonna implement is going to uh, allow a minimum password age of zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to type zero. A minimum password age of zero uh, simply allows users to change their password at any time. This is a good practice. Uh, we want people to, to be able to uh, change that at their will, uh, but we're going to enforce a, a certain time if they, they don't do it uh, as frequently. Um, Usually, if, if we were to keep the uh, 29, it's going to force the user to keep the same password for at least 29 days. Uh, we don't want that. So let's go ahead and click OK. We're going to type, uh, we're going to move on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the length. And we are going to change that to 10. All right. Now, uh, for those actually completing the lab, you definitely want to follow the uh, instructions. Take uh, the, the required uh, screen cra uh, captures uh, showing the newly configured domain uh, password uh, policy and, and paste that into your lab report. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, stop there and we're going to break uh, the lab up into two pieces. But this was part one, actually configuring a uh, group policy uh, using the uh, group policy management console to configure a, uh, a password.